tonight on Under the Big Tree. Gloomhaven is awesome, but are all of the pieces getting you a little bit gloomy? We're going to figure out how to be able to organize your stuff by building foam core box inserts. Come along with us and check it out. Gloomhaven is an incredible game. And it's also an incredibly big game, with more cardboard than I have ever seen before. It's incredibly awesome, you can go on and play it forever if you want to, but there is just so much to deal with that after a while it gets unwieldy. There are a lot of solutions for this. There are store-bought inserts that you can buy for about 70 bucks that'll hold all of your stuff and be able to keep everything organized and nice in your box in a nice, neat package. But for those of you who have been bitten with the DIY bug, like me, you can also build it yourself. The materials are easy to get, inexpensive, and not difficult to work with at all. You need a few tools, not too many, and I'll show you in this video exactly what you need to be able to make this happen and to build your own foam core box inserts for Gloomhaven. It's not a very difficult task. It can be a little bit tedious. The nice thing about it is that you need a limited number of tools. So uh, I'm gonna go through the tools that you need first and then we'll go through the materials and then we'll actually start building. So the first thing that you need is a cutting surface. I'm using this green one, this green self-healing cutting surface and it's been absolutely wonderful. Completely gets the job done. I think it was about $15 at an arts and crafts store. The next thing that you need is a T-square to be able to do your right angles, uh, as well as another ruler. I have a 24-inch ruler here. It's very important that the rulers themselves are aluminum, and it's much easier to cut it with one that has a cork bottom like this. And the reason that's important is because you're going to be using your knives to cut along the side of the ruler over and over and over again. And so if it's a wooden ruler or a plastic ruler, you're going to chew it up. So do it right the first time, buy aluminum rulers, and you're set to go. So one ruler, a T-square. Um, then you need your cutting implements. I have two that I go back and forth between. I have a utility knife, box knife style thing, and an X-Acto blade. And they both work well and they both have their positives and their, uh, and their minuses. So the first thing that I do with these, every time I start a new session, I go and get a new blade ready. So in this case with these, all I do is take a wrench and break off the previous tab. And now I have a new sharp surface. As far as the X-Acto knife goes, I simply take out the old one, put it here because they are sharp, and pull, it, pull out a new one, put it in, and I'm ready to go. So you really can get away with having one cutting implement I sort of go back and forth between the utility knife and the X-Acto just because I like to and because uh, they have different uses. Uh, this one, the utility knife is really good for doing big cuts. I like the exactness of the X-Acto blade a lot more. It feels like I'm holding a pen in my hand, but the problem with it is that the foam core really chews up the blade very quickly. So that is those kinds of things. You're gonna need a pencil to mark things, of course. Um, I also have a Sharpie that I use to be able to mark the bottom of the box so that I know what it's for. Finally, you have two choices as to how you affix the pieces of foam core together. You have glue and pins, and I use Aileen's Tacky Glue, which I really, really like, which is one method of doing it. And the other method of doing it is by using a glue gun, okay? Neither method is particularly expensive. Um, and they both have, once again, positives and negatives. Uh, the, the white glue version uh, takes longer to set, obviously, um, and you have to use the pins with it to be able to get everything lined up the way that you want. On the other hand, it's really easy to get everything lined up the way that you want. You just have to be a little bit more patient. The glue gun, sets immediately, you can build a box and be using it right away, but the downside is there's a whole lot less control, and you have very, very little time to put the pieces together because of, the, because of that fact. So what I'm gonna do 
is build two boxes, one with the glue gun and one with the white glue and pins, so you can see which version works better for you, which version you're more interested in doing, okay? Now, of course, the last thing that you need is foam core. So this is 3 16 of an inch foam core. It's the thickest foam core I could possibly buy. Um, it's very similar to the five millimeter foam core that you see people specifying in Europe, but here in the States, I couldn't find a piece uh, that, was li that was listed as five millimeter. I only found these 3 16 of an inch pieces, but uh, they're pretty darn close. Both of the surfaces are f feel very rugged and the piece feels stiff. It feels like it's gonna last for a long time, okay? I'll often go and build a foam core box insert just on my own. I'll take the game and I'll see what things need to, where need, things seem, need to fit and I move them around and everything is fine. Gloomhaven is a huge, enormous project and uh, I was very happy that somebody else on Board Game Geek had already taken the time to be able to design a series of box inserts for it and then was kind enough to model it out and put the, uh, and, and put the diagram up on Board Game Geek for everybody else to use. Uh, his name is Ray Phi, I think, P-H-I-Y, uh, and uh, I'm delighted to be using his design for this um, and just using it to show you how to actually do the building. Now there's a total for Gloomhaven of 14 different boxes that you need, 14 different things. I've gone through and done 12 of them already so that I'm almost done, and there are two more that I'm gonna do. One of them is this item scenario goals combat modifiers box that I'm gonna do with the glue gun, and the other is the token tray that I am going to do with the white glue. Uh, I like the white glue better, particularly for these types of trays that are really narrow um, because it just gives me a little bit more control. So um, we're gonna get started now. Watching somebody build a box all the way would be excruciatingly boring. So I will show you bits and pieces of how I do it uh, and then stop the camera and then come back as I get more of the work done. So we're gonna start here with our token tray. I'm gonna move everything out of the way and be right back. Okay, we're back. We've got the big piece of foam core in front of us. And the first piece that I always cut uh, is the bottom tray, which as we can see here, has got a length of 271 millimeters and a width of 130. I then have more pieces that are 271 millimeters to cut. So I'll cut more than just 130 so that I only have to make that cut once. So I'm gonna take my foam core. And the way that I do this, there we go, is I'll put the foam core down here, or I'll put the aluminum ruler down here, make sure that it's actually lined up because millimeters do count, although of course this is an inexact science. And then I'll find 271, so I go to 27 centimeters, and one more, and make my little hash mark. Then, I'm going to use the T-square to be able to draw, to be able to describe a right angle. And normally I would do this off the edge of the table, but I'm gonna do it here on the table because that's where the cameras are lined up and so that's where you can see it. So I put a couple of extra pieces of foam core underneath to just give the T-square a little bit more room. I've got it flat against the edge of the foam core and I have it right up against the, the tick mark that I made and then very simple. Draw a line, take the piece, and I'll, I'm going to finish the line here, the line that went f farther than the length of the T-square. Okay, that's it. Now, the next step is to actually cut the piece. Um, I'm going to use, because it's a big long piece, I'm going to use the box knife. I'm left-handed, obviously 
this will be different on your end. The most important thing here is to take your time. Speed is not at all important. Uh, creating a good cut is what is important. I've checked to make sure that all the surfaces of the foam core are on my cutting board, not on the table so I don't wreck it. I'm absolutely going for a 90 degree angle with the knife that's very important because that'll make it easier to line things up afterwards. I'm pushing against the edge of the ruler which I'm placing pressure on with my hand and I'm not trying to cut it all at once. I'm trying to gently go along not in any hurry and get the first cut done. And the first cut basically cuts the top piece of paper and gets a little bit of the way into the foam. The second cut is going to get much more of the foam and this will be a lot easier when I'm not making such a big cut. Oh, that's okay. And then the third cut usually cuts all the way through to the bottom. Oops. You have to be very careful not to make multiple cuts. You really want to just cut along that one line and take your time. point the rulers out of the way and I'm just using it as bracing as I go through and make my third cut. Okay, how'd we do? All right, there we go. Most of it's cut all the way through and we will use the X-Acto knife just to finish the cut on the outer surface of paper. Done. Okay, so now this is our main board and experience has certainly taught me that writing down which side ha is the proper measurement is really important. So we know that this isn't the proper side. This must be. I'm going to measure it again. 271. I'm going to do it from this side because it looks like it's a little bit better. Yep, 271 millimeters. So I'm going to take my, nut, my pencil and write 271 there because that way I know where it is that I'm going. Now we have to go the other way, 130 millimeters. Then once again, I take the T-square and I rock it into place, make my mark, and then I'm going to mark 130 right there so I know that this is one of the pieces that I actually want and not a piece of scrap. Now it's much easier to cut now that you're working on a much smaller piece. So I am going to once again lay out my aluminum ruler on the outside of the line, not on the inside. Set it up. This time I'm going to use the X-Acto knife because it's just easier. All right, here we go. One more. There actually much easier than the utility knife. If you don't mind spending the money for the X-Acto blades, it's kind of a, it's kind of a no-brainer. So here is our bottom piece. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is cut the, the long pieces that go along with it. And we can see that it's 271, which we already want, which we already have measured, and then it's 20 millimeters across.
So let's take a look at what needs to happen here. So I need to build another one of these. Then I have to build the pieces that go in there, um, two of those and one, two, three, four, five more. So two ends and then five more of the inside pieces. And then we need a couple of these small pieces to, uh, to, to be able to make compartments within the compartments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to cut this piece. I'm going to cut these, but I'm going to cut them long just by making more. I'm going to duplicate this a few more times and use it to be able to cut those. Uh, and then I'll come back and show you what the next thing is that we do. Okay, we're back. Um, I cut all of the 271 millimeter long pieces. Now the next thing that I want to talk about that's really important that I learned the hard way is this measurement. The measurement for what's going to be the inside piece of the box and these other struts that are going along there. Don't go by what it says here. Don't go by cutting it to exactly 120 millimeters. Instead, and the reason is because the thickness of the foam core is different from brand to brand. So instead what I do is I take two pieces of the foam core on edge. These are going to be the two edges. And then I put this right against it. And this is going to tell me exactly how long to cut. And then this one will be And then this one will end up being the mold that I used to cut the rest of them. So measured it. There we go. And we can see that it's perfect. Okay. All right, so I've got a few extra, but I'm going to be able to get two of these end pieces and ribs out of each one of the one of the long pieces that I cut. So I'm just going to go through and cut seven of them. Okay, we're back, and now we have the two side pieces and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces for the end and for those internal ribs. And as I mentioned, this is gonna be the one that we're gonna be doing with glue and pins. So I did my first one with glue and pins, and then I thought, well, that's ridiculous. It just took forever. And then I switched over to doing everything with hot glue for a while. And then I thought I would come back and give it another try. And what I discovered is that I actually greatly prefer doing it this way. Uh, rather than using regular Elmer's glue, I use Aileen's tacky glue, which is really, really strong and sets relatively quickly. And you can get this at any art store. So I'm going to take it. Notice that I now have the black side of the foam core down because that's going to be the bottom surface of my box. I'm going to use black all the way around and the white sort of on the inside. So I'm doing a nice bead of glue and then I'm just going to use my finger to very gently spread it out a little bit. That's what I've got Kleenex for. And then what I do is I'm going to take it and use both hands to line it up against the edge, just like that. And this stuff is so strong that I can do that and it'll actually sit pretty darn well. And now that that's sitting, I can lift this thing up and take my first pin and make sure that it's lined up. Come here, there we go. Make sure that it's lined up really neatly because we want to get a good strong bond and we want it to be tight in a 90 degree angle. There we go, 90 degree angle, right along the edge. Now I go to the other side, make sure that it's lined up perfectly. And do the same thing. And then just for fun, I'm gonna do the same thing in the middle and pull it out a little bit so that all of the edges are really flush with the bottom. So that's all that, that's all that took. It's a nice clean right angle. 
we're ready to go for the next one. So lather, rinse, and repeat. And having that ability to be able to go in and adjust it and tweak it just a little bit is what you don't get with the hot glue. So once again, I'll do a third pin right, right there. Okay, we now have the two side walls of our thing done. And now we're gonna see how close this got. I hope that they're, they need a little bit, oh good, that one's a little bit tight so I can, all right, so I can show you the next part. So. Uh, I cut these a little bit too exactly, and the result of that is that there's not quite enough room. I could get them in there and line them up. I could get them in there and line them up if I wanted to, but it's actually a little bit too tight. Uh, and so what I do then is I'm going to just shave off a sliver off of the edge. I'm glad that that happened so I can show this to you. So I just use the aluminum thing and just take my time. And this is absolutely an X-Acto knife deal. Don't try doing this with the box cutter. Shaved off the slightest bit and it's a perfect fit. With these ones, of course, we're not just doing the bottom edge. We're doing three sides of the piece of foam core. Once it's all glued up, I'm going to put it in. There'll be a little bit of extra glue splash, but incredibly no big deal. Get it in place. And now, because of the fact that we want to get the edges cinched together as well, I put two pins in the edge and you can see that that just connected those two together really nicely and we'll do the same thing here now that i've done that i merely have to do the same thing here and then go through and measure and do the inside ribs okay i've built the other box end and now we're going to build one of the internal ribs. So if we look here and we look very, very carefully, we can see that he specified that from the inside edge of that piece to the inside edge of this rib is 48 millimeters. And so I'm going to take him at his word. Ray Fee. Go along here and we've dry fit it. It works. It's the right, uh, it's the right width. And that is literally all there is to it. It's not hard. And if you, let's see, it looks to me like I, yeah, it looks to me like I want to adjust this one just a teensy bit, just a skosh. And that's the nice thing about the white glue is that I can do that. Okay, turning off the cameras again. I'll come back when all of these ribs are in. Okay, so all of the ribs on the inside have been put in. And now the last thing we have to do is put in a couple of these slats to make these small little token areas. Uh, be careful when you're building this token tree because the distance between each of these is completely different. <laughs> so no biggie, but just to, you know, keep on your toes. So the first one here is in the smallest slot and one edge we want to be 57 inches from there. One, two, three. So I do it there and I do it here. Although these pieces are so small that it's gonna be easy to eyeball it just to make sure that it's 
creating nice rectangular shapes. Once again, cover it thrice. And then, so this, we want that to be 57. So therefore we use that as the inside edge. Okay. All right, looks clean, looks 50-50. And these are kind of nice because there's a little bit of room. And so I'm gonna put in another pin just to hold it in place. Just because I can, just because I want to. Voila. And we're done. That's it. We're going to let this dry overnight and then the next time I turn on the cameras, it will be to build the other one using hot glue. Here we go. This one here. So I think what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to cut all these pieces since we've already gone through that. And I'm just going to leave these, uh, these little turrets in here to cut in front of the camera. Because you don't need to watch me cut all of those things again. And then we'll build this box using hot glue. Okay. Okay, now we're going to build the second box uh, that I was mentioning in this video. And uh, in order to save time, I've already pre-cut most of the pieces. This is the box that we're going to be doing, this item scenario goals and combat modifiers box. Uh, the one piece that I didn't cut uh, is this piece here, because I wanted to sort of go over how to do that. You can see that this piece has got these little slots to be able to put your thumbs in. Um, and because, because the measurements were so close and tight there and I couldn't really read them and make them out, I reprinted it a little bit bigger so we can actually see what it is that we're trying to build. So we'll make one of these, we'll cut it, and then we'll take it and use it as a stencil for the other one. And then we'll move on to hot gluing all this stuff together. So it may be hard to read, but that actually says five millimeters there. So we're going to go, I'm gonna go from the outside in on both sides. So we'll start there and we'll make our first mark at five. And then we'll go over here. and make a mark at five millimeters from the side there too. Then the next mark is 10 millimeters in from that point. That's gonna get us to this edge here. And then the next one is another 10 millimeters across from there. Okay, so we've gotten five millimeters cut there, five millimeter measurement there, and then a 10 millimeter measurement there, and then we've got 22 millimeters across to that edge. So now, with that in mind, we can look here and see that we should have roughly 35 millimeters in the middle, and we have 34 millimeters, so I'm gonna call that a win. All right, next step is to continue drawing what we're doing here. So we've got 10 mil five millimeters there, and then there's a 10 millimeter gap at the bottom. So the total depth is 20 millimeters, 10 millimeters plus 10 millimeters. So we go from there to there, and we can start to see roughly how this is gonna shake out. So now we have those two bits. Now the last thing we have to do is get those little pieces in there. There you have it. 
Okay, so now we only want to do all of that once. So we'll take the easy way out and scribe it exactly on this other one. Okay. All right, well, I'll turn off the cameras for this boring part and I will see you guys again on the other side when we're gonna start hot gluing it together. Okay, we're back. We've cut all our pieces. They're all laid out here. You can see they're exactly the same as what we have the diagram on here. And now we're gonna use the glue gun to put them together. Um, for those of you who have never used a glue gun before, um, they're pretty cool for arts and crafts. They're all of about $8, um, and they work on heat. You buy these very inexpensive little solid tubes of glue, you put them in the back, and then you use pressure to move it through the heating element, which gives you a sort of rubber cement-like glue out of the front. And it is very adhesive, and it's great except for one downside, which is that it's, it's messy and it sets very quickly. So the pros of using pins and tacky glue is that you have a long set time. So you can thus be able to set it up and get it exact and move things around. Uh, but it takes a while, it takes overnight. The positives of the glue gun is that as soon as you put it together, you've got a box that's working, but you have to get it right the first time. There's no room for error or almost no room for error. And it's really messy, so it's not as exact. Um, so, but be all that as it may, I wanted to put one together using the glue gun so that you guys could see that technique as well. So just like in the other, just like with the, just like with the white glue, we're going to start by putting the sides on. So this glue gun has been heating up for oh, about five minutes or so. I'm going to use this side because it's a closer to a 90 degree angle. And all I'm doing is gently pressing the lever in as I move it across and you can see it creates a bead of glue and now without further ado down it goes and you literally have a couple of seconds to fix any mistakes that you might have made and that's it so down it goes we wait for a moment and that's it. It's on. And you can see that there's a bunch of extra fluff there that we'll have to take off when it really sets up. So we're going to glue on the second piece. We've got our nice crenellations here. We fit those in. That one fits pretty darn well. So now we're going to have to glue all three sides. So therefore we're going to have even less time to set it up and it's even more difficult. In it goes. And we'll clean up all the extra glue chaff afterwards. I like sort of holding it in place a little bit and applying a little bit of pressure so that we know that it's other side. But you can also see how fast this works. So look at that. That took, what, five minutes? All right. Now we've got our center piece that we have to fit in here. And we have to make sure that these guys can 
fit around it. So let's put that, it's gotta be that. Let's put that there, yeah, that's a little bit more like it. All right, so that tells us where we need to put it. I'll put another pair of spacers in right there. There we go. Now, the thing is that we don't want to leave those in there because the glue from the glue gun could very easily stick to them. So I think instead we're just going to take a look, use our pencil, mark the center point, Okay, we are actually done with our box construction now. It turns out that these pieces are not meant to be glued in, but meant to float so that they can just create useful separators between the different types of cards that go in there. So just a couple more tasks. I need to clean up some of this glue that made such a mess, and I'm gonna just do that by taking my X-Acto knife and gently going along the edge. I can fix that up with a little bit of black Sharpie if I want. So I'm gonna keep cleaning that up. I'm gonna do that off camera. And then we're gonna come back and see all of the pieces all put together. Okay, we're finally done. There was a little bit of a polishing pass that I had to do to be able to make everything fit and to figure out where I was gonna put my stuff. Um, this is the second edition of Gloomhaven, so it's a little bit different than the version that, uh, that Ray originally designed it for, but we were able to make everything work, just a couple of changes. So first of all, here is the actually admittedly really nice insert that comes in the box. Unfortunately, there's no more room for it, so it goes away. Now, let's go through everything. All told, we made a total of 14 boxes here. Uh, some of the boxes are these types of things that end up holding other boxes. It all works, it all fits together um, very much like a lock and key, but it took a little bit of doing to be able to get it done. So I wanna go over uh, everything that, that I did here. So we'll start with this one. This is the road box. This box has got road cards and city cards in it, as well as other cards that are not needed very often, um, but they're sitting in there as well. I'm gonna put some little dividers in to be able to finish that up, but it's basically nice. When you're ready to play a game, you pull a road card out of the top. When you're done, you stick it right into the back and you're good to go. Then, let's take a look at the monsters. This was by far the most challenging part of the whole thing. So we have three of these little, ice cube tray like sets of monster standees that we had to do. They're all done. There isn't actually enough room to be able to hold all of the all of the cardboard that came with the second edition. So I have, you know, maybe a dozen pieces that are duplicates and extras of these things sitting in a Ziploc bag elsewhere, but I'll show you where that is. In any case, we have these three monster standees and this is the box for it. Um, this is the first thing that you're gonna see that I had to do a little bit of changing to. Basically, the instructions were so um, close to the edges of the box that either the size of the box changed a little bit or my measurements were off just enough that everything didn't fit exactly the way that it should have. So the result of that is that I had to make a few changes, like in this case, taking that piece off to give myself about five millimeters of extra room. It all worked, but the most important information is if you do this project, rather than believing in the exact measurements of each size of the box, dry fit them within the Gloomhaven box to make sure that they all fit together. You're gonna have to make things a little bit more narrow here or there to be able to make it all work. But anyway, so this monster standy box, one, two, and three. And all of the monster standees are now sitting in one box. They're all organized by character, so it's really easy to find them. You don't have to root around inside a cardboard to be able to get it going. Terrific. Now, here are our tokens. And as you can see, uh, they're all very nicely 
organized. Don't have to take them out and throw them on the table to have a little bank or something. When you need something, you just pull it out of here. When you're done, you just throw it right back. This box holds all of the uh, hex sized overlays. So they all fit in here just perfectly. Here are the obstacles in a small box. And here's one of the two major changes that I made. So this box here, because of the fact that I didn't sleeve my cards, I had basically twice as much room. And so I was able to make good use of that room. These standees pieces are still right where they are. Here are all the monster cards. And here are the pieces for whichever characters are currently playing in the game. So I have three characters that are playing in the game, so they're sitting there. This underneath it are some extra monster tiles that I had mentioned. If I need them, if I run out of a particular monster, I can just go in there and get them. Although I don't think that's gonna happen very often. So the coolest part of this is this right here. So just like a card catalog in a library, I went through and got all of the names of every single monster and created a small little card for them. So I just had it printed up. I just printed it up on paper with a laser printer and then I laminated it so that it would be nice and plasticky and stiff. It's got the name of the character up on top, the name of the monster you're trying to get, and then just because, just because I wanted it to be like a card catalog, I rounded the edges here with a pair of scissors, nothing big. Um, but they are now in alphabetical order from ancient artillery to wind demon. And we pull them out and we play with them and then when we're done, we put them back in just like a card catalog and it fits perfectly. The other change that I made was here. So these are our item cards over here. There was not, the version that he originally did didn't come with all of the miniatures. The version that I have do, did come all the, with all the miniatures. However, the miniatures were each in a rectangular box that was too big to be able to fit no matter what I did. So instead, what I did was I took each figure out of its box, I cut off the top of the box so that we could see what the symbol is that's connected to this figure rather than having to guess, and I put each of them in to an, a, an old plastic bag that I had. So all of the miniatures for the entire game, other than the ones that I'm currently using to make those easier, are all right here, and I haven't spent too much time looking at them, so there'll still be a nice bit of surprise when I open up a box and get a new character to play. So the result of that was that I was able to fit everything in this box, including the miniatures. Now, the items I am separating just by creating these floating pieces of foam core, just like Ray did, and it works perfectly. It's a great way to be able to find whatever it is that you wanted. Okay, now let's put it all together and see how it all fits into the box, okay? So we start with this piece. Oh, and this piece I needed to do quite a bit of hacking to be able to make it work, but that's okay. So this is the Monster Cards and Overlays base box. So this part fits there, and this part fits there, okay? So there's one segment. We've got the monster standees already in their box. This box here and this box here, you see those are exactly the same size. So here are the, the traps and obstacles. They fit into the bottom of this box so that they don't go anywhere. And then here are item cards and our characters go right in on top. Okay, the moment has arrived. We're finally going to put all of the pieces back and we can see how this complicated Lego-like jigsaw puzzle works. So we have the box. Inside the box we have all of the, the character envelopes or little mini boxes, whatever you want to call them. And then we're going to take the box with the overlays and the monster cards and the extra character, the, the characters we're playing with and the little standees. And that fits right in there. Oops. That fits right in there lengthwise. Okay. And I don't know if you can see this edge is holding those in place, but there's enough room for the long pieces to go that way. Next. 
in comes the box with the three rows of the monster standees. So that fits right on top, like a glove, just like that. Then we're going to take our full-size playing cards, the road and the city cards and stuff, and put it, it fits right there, fits right on the edge. Then next to it, we'll take this big box that has got the obstacles underneath it, as well as the uh, item cards and the rest of the character minis, and it fits right in between. That was why we had to notch out this other, that's why we had to notch out this box here to make sure there was enough room for that box to sit there. So that sits underneath. All right. Now, uh, next up on top of this box here comes our box of tokens. So that slots in there, just like that. Now, Ray did such a nice job on this. Um, the all we need to do now to be able to make a completely flat surface here is just take this extra piece of, uh, piece of foam core that he specified, this character box cover, and we put it there. And now, basically, this is, this is level, which is kind of incredible. So once that's taken care of, we take our big top box that's got the current characters we're playing, all of the, um, all of the map pieces, uh, the, the monster envelopes, and sort of all of the big sort of heavy lumber stuff. And we put it right in. Okay, almost done. Now it's time to put the last pieces in. We have the game board, which fits right there. We've got a Ziploc bag with, you know, a few extra odds and ends that we're not going to use that much, but couldn't find anywhere else to put it, so it goes right there. And then we have some laminated player reference stuff that I printed up from BGG, the rule book, and the scenario book. They all fit on top. Down goes the box top, and we have put Gloomhaven together. Now it hold, it's, take a look at this. There's, you know, that's maybe half an inch, three quarters of an inch extra that the top of this box sits over, you know, where it originally shipped, but this box is so big it doesn't make any difference at all. And now I have a wonderful carrying container to be able to hold my stuff. So that's it. I hope you learned something about building foam core box inserts and that you're encouraged to do so. It's not that hard. It's fun, it's a little bit tedious, but it's a very zen kind of thing and you can work on it a little bit at a time and even be able to use the pieces that you've already done in your game while you finish it up. And eventually, your game will look absolutely slamming and it'll be that much more organized for you to be able to take it and play it in different places. That's it for this episode of Under the Big Tree. As always, if you like what we're doing, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. For now, this is Nick, signing off.